Okay, so since the antiderivative of 1 over x turns out to be the natural log of x plus c, if we reverse that, then if we take y equals natural log of x, then y prime would be equal to 1 over x. So let's see how this works with some functions that involve natural log. So if we look at this first function, we want to derive the natural log of 2x. We recognize that the natural log is your outside function, and 2x is the inside function. So the derivative of natural log of 2x would be 1 over that inside function, so 1 over 2x, times the derivative of that inside function, so in this case times 2. But if you notice here, this does simplify because the 2's cancel, and you just get 1 over x. But I never memorize it that way. I always remember it as 1 over the function times the derivative of that function, and that way I'll never make a mistake. So natural log of x squared, natural log is your outside function, x squared is your inside function, so the derivative would be 1 over x squared times the derivative of that inside function times 2x. In this case, the x's cancel, and I actually end up with 2 over x. So as you can see, you can make mistakes here if you don't do that process every time. So the next problem here is one that involves the quotient rule. I'm sorry, the product rule. Um, you have cosine x times natural log, x, natural log of x. So you derive the first, negative sine x, leave the second one alone, natural log of x, plus now, leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second would be 1 over x. So this would be the answer using the product rule. Then we have one, this last one here involves the quotient rule. So I'm going to derive the first, 1 over 5x, times the derivative of the inside, 5. Now I'm going to leave the second one alone, natural log of x, minus, now I'm going to leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second, 1 over x, all over the bottom one squared. And it is appropriate to write this like we do with sine or cosine, and put the exponent on the inside, so I don't have to use parentheses. This can be simplified a little bit, but not important for this problem. Just make sure you understand how to use the quotient rule with a problem that involves natural log. Okay, what you have here is a proof of what the actual antiderivative of 1 over x is. And it turns out that it is a little bit more complicated. Basically, if you look here, you'll notice the antiderivative of 1 over x actually has two different answers, depending on what x is. If x is a positive, then it is natural log of x. But if x is negative, then it's a natural log of negative x. And that presents a problem, because then you have to memorize two rules, depending on what values of x you have. The way I look at it here, um, to, that helps me understand why, is if we look at the equation 1 over x, it is asymptotic in nature here, and it has two pieces, one to the right and one to the left. So if you notice, for x values that are positive, going over here, x values positive, you'll notice that the function is above the axis. So we get positive answers there. However, when we get x equals negative values, you notice the function is below the axis. So you notice then you get negative answers there. So to get around that problem, the fact that you get positive answers to the right and negative answers to the left, we, use, we get creative and we use absolute value. So then we can, only, we can just think of it as one equation. It helps us um, simplify the process. So the key here is just to remember that the, natural, the antiderivative of 1 over x is actually the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So just got to remember that when you antiderive, it always includes absolute values.